we must not be carried away. I see the information that is coming to this king. Other kings of the earth, they had no knowledge of it. So no preparation. Since there was no preparation, since there is no knowledge of anything of what is about to happen, so no decision, no nothing. Everybody was living their life as if everything was normal until when everybody was caught in the ticket. After the seven years of plenty, then there comes the seven years of famine. And that seven years of famine ate up everything and everywhere looked as if we did not even have a time called boom. But thank God there was somebody in the realm of fear, the man called Joseph. He was able to interpret and say, sir, there is going to be boom for seven years, but I want to advise you, set a man that is discreet. The man that is wise, set him over the land of Egypt, and he told them what to do, let them begin to set aside, and all the rest like that, let them save, you know, 20% or whatsoever that comes in, you know, in the year of plenty, so that afterwards, we cannot begin to use that one to take care of the people, and look at what happened in verse 13, and Pharaoh said unto Joseph, you have given a very good counsel, for as much as God, as should thee all days, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. What happens? He told him, you are the right man. Take over. And that's why he told us. That you see, when you have understanding of the time, it's going to give you an edge over others in decision making. Oh, the magician, the astrologers, all of them be consulted before this young guy. He was not even there when the king was calling all these people. They couldn't provide any solution. But he was just called up and, and all of a sudden he interpreted what he interpreted the times and he said what should be done so that they will not be caught in the ticket. And what happens? The assignment was handed over to him. Very important. We're going to be praying very shortly. There is something you need to understand right now so that it will help your decision making, so that it will help you to prepare, so that it will, it will, it will put you at an advantage to be of help to the people you know, in your circle of influence. There are some decisions that if you don't make it, so many people will suffer. And I want to tell you, you can afford that as a father, you can afford that as a mother. I can afford it as a pastor. And you can afford it as a leader in your organization. So many things will break down if you don't understand the time. Thank God for economics. Thank God, you know, for the stock exchange. Thank God for, you know, checking, you know, the ups and downs of the stock and all the rest like that. But do you know what can happen the next minute? Who will have thought that coronavirus will shut everything down? And so many people have lost so much in the stock market now. I pray that they will recover in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So what are we talking about? Very important. You see, we are all in a time when interpretation is needed. We are at the time when interpretation is needed. You should be able, I should be able to interpret the times. Because it will determine experiences in the future. If we cannot discern, if we cannot interpret accurately by the grace of God, because of our connection to the Almighty God, crying to Him to help us to be able to accurately understand the time that we are in, it will affect our experiences in the future. That's the reason why you see that Joseph in the realm of um, Pharaoh, was a blessing. Daniel, in the realm of Nebuchadnezzar and some other kings after him, was a blessing. Because he had understanding of the time and what should be done. And when they just meet out what should be done and they just went ahead to carry out what should be done, he discovered that the future was actually secured. It shall be well with us in the mighty name of Jesus, just in the way to get us ready for next week. Because next week, we'll be looking at what time is it. I would like to read Romans chapter 13, 11 to 14, as I'm trying to round off this very 
money. He said, at that time, Romans 13, verse 11 to 14. At that time, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. I think I should stop there. Now is our salvation nearer to us, closer to us than when we first believed. Now, what kind of salvation is the Bible talking about here? He's talking about the ultimate salvation. You know, we have instant salvation. That is what you had when you give your life to Jesus Christ. And there is the ultimate salvation. Jesus can eat that endure to the very end. The same shall be saved. So between the instant salvation and the ultimate salvation, God must help all of us. That's why you see people... They just fall back. Some people just withdraw back. They deny Jesus and the rest of that. Between instant salvation and the ultimate support. My prayer for you this morning is that God will give you and God will give me the understanding of what is happening all around us so that it will help us to get ourselves ready. The Bible says we should awake from our sleep. He said the morning is here. He said, the day is far spent. We are in, into the day. Morning is about to come. How ready are you? How prepared are we for the eventualities? For things that may likely happen any moment from now. And if you are listening to me anywhere around the world, this is the word of the Lord for you. You need to understand the times. Because your understanding of the times will help you to get ready and you'll be of help to people in your circle of influence. It happened in the days of Noah. He started crying because he had the understanding of what was about to happen. He started crying out. Flood is coming. Everyone will die except those that will enter into this ark. And that ark is a type of Jesus. You give your life to him, you are secured. May I invite you this morning to come into the hack? May I invite you this morning the same way Noah invited the people? So many people ignored. Only eight people were saved. Others perished. But the Bible says, God said in his word, that I don't wish that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. Will you give me a chance this morning? Will you enter into the boat? Will you give your life to Jesus? I'd like you to just bow down your heads if you want to decide for him right now. And say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I know my life has been a mess up, but you can put me together. I have heard your word about the understanding of the time. And I know you are the only one that can help out. And at the same time, help me to take a decision. Getting me ready for eventualities. I turn over my life to you. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. And help me to get ready for the future that awaits me. In Jesus' mighty name. If you said that prayer, I rejoice with you. You are now my brother, you are my sister, and I would like to pray with you. Father, I want to thank you for everyone who has said this prayer, allowing you into their heart. The Lord, you will have mercy. You will forgive. You will accept. You will wash them clean. And you will get them ready. Lord, for the future that will eventually come. Thank you, Lord, for receiving these people. In Jesus' name we pray. I'd like you to join the Bible Living Church. I'd like you to keep on following us if you have to. 
I'd like to encourage you that when the lockdown is over, join a church physically and get to the pastor. Let them help you in building up your most holy faith. I would like every one of us to pray right now and say, Father, please, Lord, help me with the understanding of this time. I can't afford, oh Lord, to live my life as if everything is normal when they are not. Lord, please help me. Help me, my Lord and my God. Help me, help me, Lord, to understand the time. I want to be another Lord man in the tribe of Issachar that I understand what Israel ought to do. Lord Jesus, I want to be of great help, Lord, to people in the circle of my influence. I want to have an edge, Lord Jesus, who are in decision-making, Lord, over others. I need you to help me to have this understanding of the time. I want to be ready. I want. I don't want to be caught on our ways. Please help me, Lord. Please help me, Lord. Give me understanding of the time. Give me understanding of this time in the name of Jesus. I know these are not usual times. I know things are happening around me now and I need to know them all. Lord, I know things will eventually happen after this time and you need to help me. Lord God in heaven, just as David, as Joseph said, it is not in me. He said it's in God. I know it's in you, Lord. The understanding of time is in you, but you can pour it into me. Lord, I cry to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, so that I will be helped in the name of Jesus, and I can be of help to people around me. Please help me to understand, Lord, the times in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Father, we give you all the glory. We exalt you. Yes. We appreciate you. You have spoken to us that if we understand the time, we'll be able to put things in right perspective. If we understand the time, it will help our preparedness against eventualities. If we understand the time, we'll be of great help to people in our circle of influence. If we understand the time, it will give us edge over others in decision making. And Lord, we know that understanding the times is in the supernatural. And you are there for us. And Lord God in heaven, we cry to you this morning that you will help us all, everyone under the sound of my voice, to understand, Lord, the times with the knowledge of what to do and what we must do in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray over you as you go this week, the presence of the Lord go with you okay. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Enter into this new week with the understanding of times in the name of Jesus Amen. and the knowledge of what you must do in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will not be caught on our in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everything will work together for your good in the name of Jesus. And above all, I pray in the name of Jesus that the coming of Jesus the second time will not catch you and I on our ways, unprepared in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, blessed Father. Amen. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' exalted name, we are praying. Let somebody shout hallelujah. The Lord bless you. The Lord take good care of you. I look forward to seeing you next week. We are trusting God that the lockdown will soon be over and we'll be able to meet physically again. God bless you. Have a good uh, day and a week ahead in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.